technology is a human endeavor. It has boosted economies, businesses, and many employment opportunities have been created. Great feats of engineering and robust civil structures and evolution of newer and fastest modes of transport. Governments are investing staggering amounts. It's a race of superiority. Welcome to Tech Nation. We are docked here at the Lake Victoria Shores, the home of Lake Victoria Logistics, where ships are constructed and launched into the waters of Lake Victoria to ease transportation of all petroleum products from Kisumu, Kenya, to Uganda, making business easy for anyone dealing in such lines. Kabel Kamatsebi II stands tall and proud in her watery home on the shores of the Might Lake Victoria. A true testament to the hard work and craftsmanship of brilliant Ugandans and other novel engineers. I'm profoundly honored to have Kabel Kamatsebi, the current reigning king mm. or the Kabaka of the Buganda, mm -hmm. being ordered and being bestowed with a ship which is the longest in the African continent. Oh. That is something that we as Ugandans must be proud of. To have our cultural entity, our cultural and titular head mm. being honored to that level. Something that will live for years and millions, hundreds and hundreds of years to say that even long, long after we have gone, mm. Kabaka Mutevi II, the barge, mm. really. will be sailing and will be a pride of the Baganda mm. and the people of Uganda in Lake Victoria. Mm. It took us almost three years to build this ship. Whenever we are in the water, we'll always be known as our origin is Uganda. Uganda. This ferry was typically constructed in this shipyard and launched in the Lake Victoria waters a few months ago. The vision was to make it cheaper, easier and simpler to use the lake to transport our most important commodity for doing business in East and Central Africa, and that is fuel. Fossil fuels are still here with us in Africa, and our intent uh, in creating LAVI or Lake Victoria Logistics Company was to ensure that fuel costs are easily transported to Uganda and can be translinked to South Sudan, Rwanda, Burundi and the DRC Congo. It was entirely made in Uganda from welded steel by builders and shipwrights. This is the first ship of its kind yes. or barge built in the whole of the entire African continent. Wow. Uganda is turning the corner, revolutionizing the technology, mm. high-tech mm. equipment like this. You have seen the type of equipment with engines from Germany, mm -hmm. propellers from many parts of the world, mm -hmm. the radar on top, yeah. the GPS plotting, yes. all this equipment you see inside, the engine rooms, and the kind of um, precision that was initiated here, mm. entailed the fusion of a number of global entities or nationalities. Yeah. We had the Chinese, mm -hmm. we had the Indians, we had the Kenyans, we had the Ugandans. But the bulk of the population was Uganda. Was Uganda. Local content. We could not, and I want to tell you, at the initial stages, get even one single uh, welder in the entire of East Af Eastern Africa who was trained in welding. Not even one. What does that tell you? We have now been able to build capacity in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, mm -hmm. this is something that Uganda must record as a major transformation on hands-on, eyes-on, high-precision welding equipment. We did not at one time have enough power. We had to import generators which had to maintain constant power. We have had challenges like um, 
the rise of the water, mm. the lake, mm. which has never been recorded to this level since 1964 in May. Mm. But as it were, I want to tell you that despite all the setbacks we had, we have been able to endear, we've been able to work hard. The narrative you have now is that Ugandans have now been trained in welding. True. From ab initio, they can now be able to have the ECOP, the pipeline from uh, the Albertine region all the way to Tanga. Oh. The longest um, heated pipeline of 4,000, almost 400 kilometers. The tank vessel has been constructed and adapted to carry oil in bulk as cargo. The cheapest ways and means of movement of fuel or goods and services all over the world is by water. God gave us the largest freshwater lake in the world in the name of Lake Victoria mm. or Narubali mm. in Uganda. Mm. We have never optimally utilized that lake. So we have used that looked at using lake water transport and using large vessels, or what you call barges, to transport 4.5 million liters and it takes us 14 hours from Kisumu into Kauku uh, between Entebbe and Kampala. Uganda is rising to the innovation challenge, investing in research and development business transformation and technological advancements generating impressive operational efficiencies and improving the overall Ugandan oil economy. The position makes it easy now for us to have what you call a tank farm. That fa tank farm makes it easy for us also to interconnect within the country and have fuel made available for the consumers. Mm. You recall in nine, 2008, during the Kenya upheavals. You noted that um, when uh, the railway lines were uprooted and our fuel tanks were burnt between Eldoret, Nakuru, and the border with Uganda, Uganda's economy overheated overnight because we did not have alternative flow of fuel into the country. And the dollar has never gone back to where it was at that time. We have built 14 tanks with a capacity of 70 million liters. That capacity also gives us what you call the terminal, which is the jetty. Mm -hmm. In the other alternative means, it's the port, or if you want to say, it is the airport, if it was aircrafts. Mm -hmm. This is the longest jetty you have in Lake Victoria, which is 270 meters long, and can be able to accommodate these ships or these barges which are about 120 meters by uh, 23 meters. What does that mean? It means that we can carry averagely what Uganda consumes in a day, store what the country can consume as a strategic reserve, save our roads, save our environment, and make it easier for people of Uganda to do business. Now, Uganda consumes now an average of 210 million liters a month. And you will note that um, Uganda imports kerosene, petrol, mm -hmm. diesel, and jet A1 for the aircrafts. In terms of the aircrafts, we are 16 kilometers away from the airport, making it easy for you to get jet A1 to the airport, which is mm -hmm. zero rated. And our exports mm -hmm. can now be competitive in the global market when we land the aircrafts in the European capitals, mm -hmm. maybe like Netherlands, or if we went to Dubai or Kwanzong in China. Mm. We are docked here at the shores of Lake Victoria in Entebbe, the home of Lake Victoria Logistics, where ships are constructed and launched into the waters of Lake Victoria to transport petroleum products all the way from Kisumu, Kenya, back to Uganda making it easy for all activity launched around it very easy. We will be right back after the break. This is called the wheelhouse. The? Wheelhouse. Wheelhouse. Because you have the wheel. Oh yeah. 
This is the most high-tech ferry we have floating on Ugandan waters. Technician has been granted exclusive access to give you the front view to what happens below and above the deck. And how long is this? This is 118 meters long. Oh my God. Yes, this is 118 meters long. It uh, has a double hull built. So it means there is the outer shell that is the hull and then there is another inner shell that houses the petroleum tanks. Yeah. So there will be a flexible hose connecting this to the ship. Yeah. Similarly... And in this is not... There is a system, the pipes we've just seen, yes. taking it straight to, straight the, storage, to the tanks. To yes. The tanks. yes. So from the pumping will be done from the ship. Oh, so yes. the ship has uh, pumps. Uh, this is high capacity pumps mm -hmm. that will push the product from their tankage mm -hmm. all the way to the tanks. Oh, yes. yes. So this is where this is where the land meets the tank basically. Okay. So the, the the interface between the, the ship and the terminal itself mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. So from the ship we'll have uh, flexible hoses uh, which will connect to the manifold and then through the ship pumps the product will be pumped all the way to the tankage we've just left. Mm -hmm. Uh, to do that, um, we've integrated a lot of technology. Uh, these are mass flow meters. Mass flow meters. Yes. Um, basically, we'll be metering the amount of product that will be pumped to the, to the tanks. So basically, these are junction boxes. Um, everything here is flame proof. That is why it's so bulky. Mm. It means, uh, in as much as it's communication systems, yes. it's electric powered. So if oh. there is any electric shot, it is contained within these the boxes. Box. That's why they are a bit bulky. But uh, nonetheless, these are switches for, mm. to operate all this uh, equipment mm -hmm. we have here mm. and also for communication. Okay. Yes. International bulk chemical codes govern the self transport of chemical cargoes and provides various levels of protection against the uncontrolled release of the substances. For, for safety, we have, uh, for, first of all, is the crew. We employ a highly trained, highly experienced uh, international crew. Mm. Uh, we've provided lifeboats for them. Uh, you can see on either side, orange lifeboats. Oh. One can host 20 people. Yes. Looks small. It looks small, but it has enough capacity. Oh, really? We have a hospital on board for the crew. I want to see that. The technology that is employed here basically is for the ultimate safety and efficiency of the petroleum operation in general. The, big, the biggest thing we have in mind is to protect the waters. Mm -hmm. These are shared waters for all the East African community yes. nations. Yes. And uh, we want to play our role to make sure that in as much as we are taking advantage of the blue economy, we are also protecting it at the same time. Um, so these tankers are built with safety in, in mind. Uh, we have double hull, 118 meters, 10 tanks uh, for petroleum, effective for petroleum uh, use. They have uh, self, self propulsion. So on board here, we've uh, deployed a lot of technology, yeah. uh, communication. Mm -hmm. uh, we have satellite communication. Oh, wow. So, so it will always be giving the crew and ourselves on the terminal end a sense of how the ship is performing while it's in, in, in the water. It is important for us to maximize the use of the lake mm. and also utilize it optimally. And we, that's why we have satisfied the requirement or the requisite requirements of NEMA, National Environmental Management Authority. We have adhered to all the regulatory frameworks from the Minister of Transport, Minister of Water, NEMA and the Minister of Energy and ensuring that these regulations adhere to the modern technology that we have employed now at the lake. And I want to tell you that we have one of the best safety measures which preserves the environment under LAVI. Secondly, we also have the best firefighting or safety um, uh, systems that have been inbuilt. Yeah. Meaning that in a very unlikely event that anything happened to the barge, that fuel can not even a single liter, not even a drop would leak into Lake Victoria. It goes into the second hull, and that's why they call them double hull. The fuel will just flow to the next component and it will be kept there. 
That is a very high level safety measure, which is built and approved by 14 major engineering um, oversight institutions in the world. This badge here is one of the best you have in the world. So in case someone goes overboard, I just pick one of these and I throw it out to them. They can float on it until we recover them. Yes. Based on the robust and proven technology, the ferry is also easy to maintain, resulting in reliable and predictable operations. Lavi or uh, Mahadi Infra makes this a one-stop center for business to be done in this country. And we have built what you call high-tech uh, badges. Mm, mm, mm. These are non-sync, uh, double hull badges, mm. which makes it one of the best and the most ideal equipment for Lake Victoria, which serves the people within the Great Lakes region. They have enough food for two weeks. Yes, they have a chef. Part of the crew is a chef. Yes, and they have a mess room on the other side, Ooh. right through there. Sit very well. Yes. And it's very comfortable, it's actually. Completely. And then you sit and have, have your, your meal. meal. So according to their work schedules, because yeah. the crew is basically always working. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is uh, the main deck and uh, this is the access to the engine room. Okay. It gets really warm, so you need all the heat to be reflected back. This is a local panel. These ones are what they'll be used to pump the petroleum from the ship to the, to the shore tanks. This explains exactly what this cruise all ship the, is All for. the firefighting systems that oh, have yes. been installed here, they are, they are detailed. Mm. Is this also what helps you to know there is a rock yes. in front of me? But the most important is the, the island. Mm -hmm. and uh, the other vessel. The other vessels as well. The systems will pick the code for the other vessel. So they will call from here. Um, for example, I'll call Fiona, you are in my way. Okay. Uh, are you going uh, port side, are you going starboard side so that we can avoid each oh, other? Yeah. So this is uh, the map of Lake Victoria. Victoria. Yes. Oh, yes. So this is all mapped out. Yes. And I can see that Every, Pinso is right exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. So, so this is the route? Yes. Here. That is the same route. Up he calculates to, it and also it's pro provided. Yes. yes. Up to exactly Pisom. where we are going. To, yes. Our jetty where it's going yes. to be. Yes. They have to yes. give it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. This has been a very great episode, power packed, full of different technologies that are being deployed here in Uganda by Ugandans. Of course, a lot more is still going to happen right here at Tech Nation. If you are doing anything in your society, in your community, are you solving any problem? We will find you, but you can also find us at Tech Nation underscore UJ. From me and the team, it's a wrap and it's a good night. Ciao.